we really treasure our international students. Um, they add to the diversity of viewpoints and perspectives, and especially for our local students, um, they don't always experience all of the different cultures that we have here on campus. So particularly um, European students, um, students from um, some of the South Asian, even African countries, they, they really add a lot. And they're not part of our normal Hawaii ethnic mix that we're so familiar with, um, mostly Asian. Can you talk about the 27 students from the seven countries? What's, what's next for them? So we have 27 students we've identified from the seven countries that are mentioned in the executive order. Those are all graduate students at UH Manoa. Um, the advice we shared with them was the same as the advice that's pretty much been shared by every university in the country, which is it's best that you not travel out of the U.S. now. Um, it isn't clear whether you'll be able to come back and continue your studies um, at this point. So that's, that's our advice to them for now. Um, if they do leave, would the university help them to come back? Uh, the university is not their legal counsel. So we have provided them guidance on um, where to get legal counsel. The local ACLU is offered to help. Um, there's also a National Association of Immigrant uh, Lawyers that has reached out to students across the country. But we can't really help them navigate the federal um, immigration bureaucracy. Um, we do help with visas and the like, but in terms of actually being able to enter the country and the specific meaning of the executive order and how it may be interpreted over time has already been reinterpreted. And then there are a number of um, court cases going on in different parts of the country as well. So I think it's a very fluid situation and that's why we recommend they not leave. And what about the research that's being done in those seven targeted countries? Some, some say that they can't go back out in the field. Well, so um, those students aren't necessarily working in their home countries. Those are students who came to UH for the great education that we offer. Um, but you are right that there's a, there is an issue with any of our faculty and staff who do have research programs in those countries. And um, even if they are US citizens, the question is whether or not there will be responses from any of those countries that would impact their ability to even enter those countries or not. And, and I know at least one country has suggested that if the U.S. is not welcoming of their citizens into the U.S., then they will similarly not be welcoming of U.S. citizens into their country. So it's, it's obviously a very fluid situation. Um, we wanted to respond quickly to the immediate concern that we had for our current students. Do you have, sorry. Oh, well, you, well, what about what about the students that are trying to apply to UH and come to school here? I mean, what happens to their application process? Uh, we are certainly processing applications. We will certainly process visas to the extent, you know, the, the federal um, uh, government allows us to do so in accord with previous practices. But um, depending on the interpretation of the executive orders, people who have those legitimate visas those are the people who may not be able to enter this country. Do you think that this is going to have a chilling effect? Because there is such a large international group of students uh, for them to apply here, uh, even if, it's, if they're not from that particular country, and also on, say, research out of the country. I think it's going to be a challenge for us. I mean, we're going to do our best to continue to be welcoming of international students. We're going to hope that the federal government, um, you know, part of the visa application process does vet them for security purposes. Um, uh, but we certainly would like to continue to be welcoming of students and continue to be global in our research. Is UH doing anything um, just as a university standpoint, a school standpoint, of trying to reach out to the government and get exempt from this? Uh, we don't think that it's likely for UH alone to become exempt. Um, I would say that personally, I would hope that over time we can achieve a, a more nuanced approach that focuses on um, mitigating security risks. That's something we all worry about without this kind of blanket exemption. And do you know if the university has implemented any new programs or outreach strategies to help out these 27 students? Oh yeah, we absolutely have reached out to them individually uh, to offer them additional you know, direct engagement and who they can contact as well. Uh, that is our uh, I'll get that to you. yeah. It's uh, international. Sorry, 
That's our Office of International Student Services. It's uh, headquartered here at UH Manoa. We also have International Student Services offices on all of our other campuses that help our international students on a routine basis, but um, fortunately the other nine campuses don't have students from the seven impacted countries.